Hello, welcome to this session of the Isle of Wight Story Festival. We've got the fabulous storyteller Sue Bailey lined up for you next and she's going to be telling you lots of stories about spiders. Not just scary spiders, but funny spiders and tricky spiders and clever spiders. Do you like spiders? You could let us know in the chat if you do. Oh, I need to tell you something about that. If you do get involved in the chat, or your grown-ups do, please be careful of what information you share. So please don't put your full name or your address or your, the school you go to or anything like that. The other thing I need to say is please play nice. OK, so we won't accept bullying of any kind. I'm sure you wouldn't do that, but any unpleasant comments will be taken down from the site. The other thing I need to mention is if you're under the age of 12, we do ask that you are accompanied by an adult to all sessions of the Isle of Wight Story Festival. Anyway, that's enough of the boring stuff. We've got lots of fun stuff coming up now with Sue. I can't wait to hear her stories about spiders. So without more ado, here's the fabulous Sue Bailey. I'm Sue, Sue the storyteller. I tell tales all over the place to all sorts of people. Sometimes I have things to help me tell my tales. I've got some of them here. Look at this one. This is a frog on a string. And if I turn this, it makes a sound. So sometimes I tell frog stories. An old lady who swallowed to fly. I like sing that song in a bit. And I have a gong. When I bang it, it makes a sound like this. <coughs> or I have a bowl. Listen to this one. them sometimes they're well-known stories like Goldilocks or there might be tales from another country like Anansi stories which are about spiders. You might wonder what these are. These are my hats. Sometimes I wear one of my hats. Especially on a story walk it means it's easy for people to spot me because I've got a hat on my head. Not today though. Today I've got on a scarf and I've got this scarf on because it's got lots of bugs on it including spiders and that's what I'm going to do today I'm going to tell stories about spiders some people like them some people don't like them pretty amazing things and they come in lots of different sizes have you ever heard of money spiders they're tiny, often sort of orangey red colour. Really, really minute. And they sort of dangle down on little threads. And if one lands on you, it's supposed to be good luck. It's supposed to show you're going to get some new clothes. That good fortune is going to come your way. In Roman times, the soldiers used to carry coins around with them, with spiders on them. I think it was going to bring them good luck. Well, I've got a story I'm going to tell you that's about a spider. Well, it's a shape-shifting spider. Sometimes it's a spider and sometimes it's a human. And it's a story about a character called a Nancy. Now, a Nancy stories, you can find them in Africa and you can find them across the Atlantic Ocean in places like the Caribbean, on the islands of Jamaica and St. Lucia. And often in these stories, and Nancy is a bit of a trickster. So this story, and Nancy and the Yams. There was once a queen. She's not very important in this story, except that she had a very unusual name. Her name was the number five. But she hated it. She hated it so much, she put a curse on it. She did 
would not want people calling her Queen Five. She would like to have been somebody like Queen Esmeralda. No, Queen Five. Right, she said, from now on. I do not want to be called Queen Five. And if anybody says my name out loud, they will drop down. <coughs> So nobody ever said the Queen's name out loud. Not anymore. However, and Nancy had heard about this and thought he could use this to his advantage. He went and dug up lots of yams, which are a bit like potatoes, and he put them round a water hole where lots of animals used to come and drink. And then he waited. The first animal to come along was a warthog. Now, I don't know if you know what a warthog's like. It's got tusks and it's kind of bristly. It's a bit like a pig. And a warthog's favourite food is yams. The warthog saw the yams, saw a Nancy buy them and said, Oh, uh, hello, Nancy. Uh, what are you doing with all these yams here? I like yams. Uh, could I eat some? And Nancy, looking up, saw the warthog and said, Oh, no, 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 warthog, you can't eat these yams. These are a present for the Queen. I promised I would give her six piles of yams. But I've got a bit of a problem. I'm not very good at counting. And I don't know how many piles I've got. I'll, I'll show you. Look. Uh, and he pretended to be useless at counting and he said okay I know it starts off one eight two and no 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 one two and no uh no you're not very good at counting are you said the warthog oh well, I can count them would you like me to count them for you oh yes please said the Nancy that would be really helpful and the warthog went over to the piles of yams and started counting. Okay, you have got uh, one pile, or two piles, three piles, four piles. More... <coughs> Drop down dead, because he just said the number out loud. That night, and Nancy had a warthog for his tea. The next day, along came a deer. Hello, and Nancy. Oh, what are you doing with all these piles of yams here? Mm, I like yams. Could I eat some? No, 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 said Nancy. No, uh, no, these are a present for the Queen. Um, but, oh dear, I've got such a problem. I'm not very good at counting and I said I would give her six piles of yams, but I don't know how many piles I've got here. And again, he pretended to be useless at counting. I know it starts off one, uh, seven, three, uh, two, no, no, one, two, three. Oh, you're not very good at counting, are you? said the deer. Um, deer are very good at counting. Would you like me to count them for you, Nancy? Oh, yes, please, said Nancy thinking to himself, oh yes, yum yum dear for tea tonight. But he didn't say that out loud. Instead he said, oh yes please dear, that would be really helpful. And the deer went over and said, okay, now listen carefully and Nancy and you might learn something. It's quite easy, it goes like this. You have got one pile, two piles, three piles, four piles, five <coughs> And the deer dropped down dead. And Nancy had the deer for tea that night. And so it went on. Every day some poor animal would come down, count the piles of yams, say that fateful number and drop down dead. However, living in the trees nearby was a monkey. And the monkey had seen what Nancy was doing and thought, I'm going to get a Nancy back at his own game. Oh yes, and he sauntered over. <laughs> Hi Nancy, uh, what are you doing with all those yams there? I like yams, can I eat some? Oh, no, 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 said Nancy thinking, oh yes, 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 monkey for tea tonight, my favourite. 
but he didn't say that out loud. He said, he said, no, 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 these are a present for the Queen, but Monkey, I've got such a problem. I'm just useless at counting. I, I just don't know how many I've got. And again, he pretended that he was rubbish at counting. And the monkey said, well, I'm pretty good at counting. Would you like me to count them for you? Yes, please, said Nancy. That would be really helpful. Thank you. And so the monkey went over and he sat down on top of one of the piles of yams. And he started counting. Okay, and then see, here I go. You have got a uh, one pile, two piles, three piles, a uh, four piles. Oh, <laughs> nearly forgot the pile I'm sitting on. Uh, 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 yes, yes, yes. Uh, oh, did I do something wrong? Said the monkey. Um, yes, 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 yes. I don't think you've got that quite right. Said the monkey. I think you should try again. Oh. All right then. And the monkey gets up, shuffles along, sits down on a different pile. Okay, I'll count them for you again. Here I go. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 I'm ready, said Nancy. Yeah, this time, this time. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> here I go. You have got uh, a one pile, a two piles, a three piles, a four piles. Nearly forgot the pile I'm sitting on. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, 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 said Nancy, thinking to himself, why isn't he saying that I'm up? I wanted to drop down and did. And the monkey's thinking to himself, huh, I know exactly how many piles he's got and there's no way I'm going to say that number out loud. Uh, I, I think you should try one more time. Oh, I'll do it one more time, but this is going to be the last one. That's fine, said Nancy. This can be the last time. All right. So the monkey gets up, shuffles along, and sits down on a different pile. Okay. Here I go. Are you ready? Uh, okay. You have got a one pile, a two piles, three piles, four piles. And I'm not forgetting that pile I'm sitting on. No, 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 said Nancy. You are rubbish at counting. Even I and Nancy am better at counting than you. I have got one pile, two piles, three piles, four piles, five piles. And Nancy fell down dead. So that night, instead of a Nancy having monkey for tea, monkey had a Nancy for tea. So, if you go for a walk in the woods and you come across a water hole and round it you see some piles of yams, be very careful. Don't say the number five out loud. <sighs>
I know an old lady who swallowed a cat. Fancy that! She swallowed a cat! She swallowed the cat to catch the bird. She swallowed the bird to catch the spider that a wriggled and jiggled and tickled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly, but I don't know why. She swallowed the fly. Perhaps she'll die. I know an old lady who swallowed a dog. What a hog! She swallowed a dog! She swallowed the dog to catch the cat. She swallowed the cat to catch the bird. She swallowed the bird to catch the spider that I wriggled and jiggled and tickled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly, but I don't know why. She swallowed the fly. Perhaps she'll die. I know an old lady who swallowed a cow. I don't know how. She swallowed a cow. She swallowed the cow to catch the dog. She swallowed the dog to catch the cat. She swallowed the cat to catch the bird. She swallowed the bird to catch the spider that wriggled and jiggled and tickled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly, but I don't know why. She swallowed the fly. Perhaps she'll die. I don't know if you know this story. It's got a very sudden and a very sad ending. It goes like this. I know an old lady who swallowed a horse. <gasps> She's dead, of course. And it just ends like that. Oh, silly old lady. If she only hadn't swallowed the fly. <laughs> Spiders. Get them all over the place. There was one particular spider in a cave in Scotland in 1306, when Robert the Bruce, the deposed King of Scotland, was hiding. He'd been defeated by the English and he was trying to decide what to do next. And as he sat there, he watched a spider as time and time again, he tried to swing across to a ledge to spin a web. And it kept failing, but it didn't give up until finally it succeeded and it made a web. Oh yes, and Robert the Bruce, he's supposed to have been inspired by this, to not give up in his battle against the English. And he went out there and renewed his fighting and he and his troops, they fought and they beat the English at the Battle of Bannockburn. Suppose he a legend. It may not be quite true, but as with many, many legends, there might be a gem of truth hiding in there somewhere. <laughs> See what I've got here? It's a blanket with lots of different colours, but this is a handmade blanket and it was woven by somebody. And you could tell because there are still strings at one end, and it used to be on the loom. And there'd be threads running downwards, and then somebody would weave in and out with a shuttle to make all these lovely colours. And they'd change them as they move from one colour to another. It must have taken a lot of hours of work with this to make this. Beautiful, isn't it? Nice and warm as well. Oh, my next story is about somebody who weaves. <clears throat> it's from a long time ago. It's a Greek story. Although the Romans also adopted it, but changed the name slightly. But it's about somebody whose name was Arachne. Now, some of you may have heard of that. You can have arachnophobia, which is a fear of spiders. And um, arachnid is another name for a spider, arachnids. So maybe that gives you a clue why I'm telling this story. There was once a young woman and she was a weaver. And she used to take threads of all sorts of different colors and she would create the most beautiful fabric, like gossamer fine. 
almost translucent, shimmery. She would take the colours of blue from the sky and the deep blue sea and greens of leaves and she would weave them all together and create this gorgeous cloth. And her fame spread far and wide and people would come and admire the things that she made. But with the admiration came a growth in pride and she became more and more haughty and arrogant saying that she was by far the best weaver and nobody else could ever match her skills. But the gods of above and the heaven heard her and in particular one god, Athena, sometimes known to be the god of war but also the god of handicrafts and she felt that some of her skill must have passed somehow to Arachne. And she came down one day from the heavens and stood in the doorway and watched Athena, Arachne and said, from whom do you get your skills? And Arachne said, ha, from nobody. I told myself I have no one to be grateful to because I have spent hours and hours perfecting my skills. And Athena was not happy about this and she said, I think you should give due to the gods for passing on their skills to you. And she said, why should I? Huh? I could have a contest with any god and show that I am better. And so the challenge was thrown down. In three days hence, the two of them would weave. And Athena said, the god, the great god Zeus, can judge who is the better. And whoever is the loser shall never weave again. And so it was to be. Three days later, they set up their looms. They gathered their threads. And the challenge began. And all the shuttles went in and out. The colours changed. There were silvers and, and golds and, and yellows and blues and greens and oranges and all the colours of the rainbows, each of them skillfully weaving pictures into their material. And finally Zeus held up his hands and said, let me see what has been created. And he looked at the god Athena's and oh, as was a sight to behold. Images of the gods showing their prowess at all sorts of different activities, spun through with gold threads. Oh, it was indeed a work of art. And then the god Zeus looked at Athena's and hers. It portrayed the gods playing. Oh, yes. Oh. Indeed, it felt as if it was alive. The images were beautiful, the colours superb. And you said, Indeed, I see there is skill from both of you. But I think the theme showing the gods at their best, at their prowess, means that Athena's cloth is better. And Arachne said, this cannot be. And she was so sad. I, but it means I cannot weave anymore. My life is weaving. This please, please have pity. And Athena, Athena looked at Arachne. And she in her heart knew that Arachne's weaving was better. But it had been said that whoever lost should weave no more. And so she said, Arachne, you may weave no more as a mortal, but I will give you the chance to spin and weave a web forever. And she touched her and Arachne changed into a spider. And that spider spun the most beautiful webs that catch the glistening dew. And from that day to this, Arachne does not spin cloth, but she does spin webs of wonder. If you've had a chance, go outside. If there's been a nice still day and the dew has fallen on a cobweb, 
You could look in your back garden, look in your front garden, just look on the window ledges anywhere you live and see spiders are just about everywhere and you might find a web. And they are just creations of beauty and, and so skillful and, and so strong. You could have a go at drawing a web. Put a spider in the middle maybe and, and, and draw some lines and, well, you could look at some of the craft activities that I've drawn, that I've done. And you could have a go and, and maybe then you can send your examples of things that you have made to our gallery. And then go up on Facebook and onto our website and you will have been inspired to be a creator just like Arachne. I bet you know this song. It goes like this. Incy wincy spider climbing up the spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sunshine and dried up all the rain. So incy wincy spider climbed up the spout again. You can join in, come. In sea, in sea, spider climbing up the spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sunshine and dried up all the rain. So in sea, in sea, spider climbed up the spout again. Did you see how I got my fingers all mixed up? But it doesn't matter. The thing is just to have a little bit of fun. Hensy wincy spider climbing up the spout. And down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sunshine and dried up all the rain. So hensy wincy spider climbed up the spout again. It's one of the great things about songs and singing. It can just make you feel better. Oh yes. made up stories about why things are the way they are. Lots of people have over the years. Lots and lots of them. And this is another story about a Nancy. Remember me mentioning a Nancy? <laughs> now a Nancy is sometimes a spider and sometimes he's a human. But this is a story of when he was a spider, most definitely. But a spider with fat legs. <laughs> You don't see many of them around. You see, and Nancy loved food, but he didn't really like cooking very much, but he did like eating it. And one day he was going for a walk down the road and he met his friend Rabbit. And Rabbit said, hey, and Nancy, I'm cooking spring greens for dinner. Would you like to come and join me? And Nancy said, oh yes, I like spring greens. I will come and join you for dinner. Uh, but I've got a few jobs to do first, so I'll I tell you what, look, I'll tie this, I'll sp spun a little bit of web and I'll, I'll put it around my arm, or maybe even one of my legs, and you hang hold of it, and when the dinner's ready, just give it a tug, and I'll come running. Okay, so grab it, and off he went. And then she thought, phew, I got away with that one, I thought maybe I'd have to go and help him do some work. I don't want to do that, but I do want to eat his spring greens. He went a bit further down the road and he came across a monkey. Hi, said the monkey, I'm cooking beans today. I've got a whole pot of beans cooking. Why don't you and Nancy come and join us for lunch? Oh yes, said the Nancy, that sounds really good, but I've got a few jobs to do first. Here, look, I'll spin a bit of web and tie it around my leg and give you the other end. And if you pull, when dinner's ready, I'll come running. Okay, said the monkey, and off he went, taking the thread with him. Went a little bit further. Came across Hog. Huh? Hi, said Hog. We have got some sweet potatoes for dinner today. Bacon in the oven. Would you like to come and join us for dinner? Oh, yes, said Nancy. I love sweet potatoes. 
Yes, I will be there. But look, I've got a few jobs to do. And again, he spun some more thread, tied it around one of his legs and gave the other end to Hog. Just give a tug on this when dinner's ready and I will come running. And so it went on. He went for a walk through the woods and he met eight different friends. And each time they invited him for dinner. And he didn't want to turn anything down and oh, oh, oh he had a big tummy, he could manage all of this food. Only things got a bit serious because first a rabbit pulled on the string. Oh, 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 food's ready, I better go, I better go, rabbit's calling me. And then at the same time, a monkey pulled on a different leg. Oh, 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 her dinner's ready, monkey's, oh. Then Hog pulled until all eight of his legs were being pulled in different directions. Now, Spider Web is very strong and it pulled and pulled and pulled until finally it snapped. Bing, 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 bing. But Anansi's legs were so long and thin they're still like that to this day which is why spiders legs are very very thin maybe that's what comes of Anansi being so greedy I wonder if he went and ate any of the food who knows maybe you could make up a story about a spider send it in to us Record it. Send us a little video.